So what's up YouTube, this is Doug Jenkins from iMixandMaster.com. You're seeing me in my personal mixing studio. Today I'm going to use some, uh, some of my video time here on YouTube to talk about an interface company that I really like. Now I know you can't really see my face, can you? Yeah, you can. It's alright. Nobody needs to see my face. But right now you're actually hearing a device. I might have it a little hot. Um, let me see here. But... I want to talk about the device that you're seeing on screen here. And this is called the, the Orion Studio HD from Antelope. I'm actually a huge Antelope fan. I use their Pure 2, and you're actually hearing the Pure 2 is the final AD. And it's actually running USB mode. So let me talk about the routing of this, this video and talk about how flexible these interfaces are. It's a great way to show you how flexible they are. So the first thing we have is this. I got a little bit of a cold too, so forgive me. That's why I'm breathing a little bit heavy. It's crazy. Um, so check this out. So I'm actually doing a screen capture with the QuickTime player. So this, if you open up the QuickTime player, which I'm not going to, I have this running Antelope Pure 2 USB. Then, just for the video's sake, um, we will put... So we are looking at the, the Orion, this is the Orion Studio. But if I go to, let's just make it legit for the video and stay on the topic of antelope. Um, no, no, no. I don't want a deer to show up. Darn it. Hey, there we go. So you can see on the antelope site, I'm gonna show you a second routing. So my, my internet and my sound card is hooked up USB. So what I mean by that is the Orion Studio HD is running USB mode to, um, through the matrix, and I'll show you the matrix view here in a second. My Pure 2 is running QuickTime Player USB mode, and my Pro Tool session that we're going to get into here in a minute, I'm going to do a shootout of my 1073 EQs against the actual real-time effects that um, the Antelope company got together with some other manufacturers and made some phenomenal phenomenal representations of the of the classic hardware pieces and things like that so we're going to go through so in my system i want you to see this real quick um and so you have internal line out digital out orion studio hd and i have pure 2 i also have avid so i i'm actually capable this is this is really crazy because most interfaces that i've purchased they're either one or the other. If you're going to run USB mode, you're done. You're in USB mode. If you're going to run it as a standalone, it's standalone. If you're going to run it as this, it's this. So to be able to do multiple things, and I'm going to talk about just some of the functionality you can come up with in your mind, like, wow, I could like uh, play back a YouTube video and check a mix, or I could I could do this, or or I could uh, hook up my, my laptop at the same time of my main system and use it like a... Uh, um, in the case of like a virtual instrument, things like that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of functionality that we don't have to get into today, but I just wanted to talk about the flexibility. So the one that we're looking at today is actually this Orion Studio um, HD, which is on their site. So with all that being said, I just wanted to get this open. So I have three different sound sources for this video. Now let's look at the actual page. So on the front of the Orion Studio HD, there is four mic pre's, four line amps, so it's the same thing, it's a combo jack, and then there's four high Z. So if you go to the, the routing, you can actually go to line, high Z, or microphone. Now, when you have actually 12 of these controlled by the software, I'm going to show you something really cool. What they've incorporated is this technology here. So you have um, your, your 1073, and you can actually add one of these classic VCA-160s. There's all kinds, too, by the way. There's the A76, 903, um, 160, Liverpool. So all these are very, very sought-after pieces. And the first thing that I noticed about them is they all sound really good, and I'm going to show you real quick. So if you look at my routing matrix, I think the first thing that... that came to my mind when I opened this up was oh boy like please like don't make this more complex than it has to be and, and then I got a little discouraged and thinking oh man do I have to route this and do I have to route that but once I got to understanding what they did and what Antelope was trying to achieve with this they did achieve it it lets you um, become more flexible with your interface than most 
any other interface I've seen on the market. So, so what, what do I mean by that? When, when I started to realize that I could get the routing the, the way that I wanted, and how is this beneficial, I'm going to tell you. So if I go to um, load, you can actually save it down here too, but I load like a different session. So I have the HD routing with effects. If I go to load my session, so if I hit load here, I'm sorry, um, let me go to browse. So if I go to one of these, you know, Pro Tools HD routing, Pro Tools HD summing, Pro Tools HD with USB to YouTube, HD routing with FX and YouTube, and that's not how you spell YouTube. But what I'm saying is once you start to get your signal and your routing and your paths, you can have that open every single time. So it's the first few days you really just got to dig in man and figure out what you wanted to do and get everything in your studio routed so it's pretty much like a glorified patch bay for this actual piece of hardware and at first this can be very intimidating because it's a lot and if it wasn't a lot then people would be upset and if it's too much people get upset so what i'm saying is i'd rather have a lot and get upset than a little and get upset do you know what i mean so the thing was was when i first got this i was like man these guys really 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 are uh, are pushing it but dude once you get into this i promise you you'll absolutely love it once you understand the routing so let me talk about my studio's routing so in here we have 16 channels of summing. So what I wanted to do with my summing, which I'm going to show you in the video here, is I wanted to take the summing. Let me let me put that down. So my summing is now going to be correspondent to my HD. So you can see this HDX. Okay, so that's my Pro Tools session that you see behind. That's the sound card for Pro Tools. So what I want to show you here is this. If I go HDX out, I can I can actually hold the shift key on my keyboard hit the 16 channels. Okay, so that's 16 channels of my HDX play, which is my output in this routing. It's the output of the Orion when it's hooked up to my HD card. So I have 18, I have 16 outputs. So what I did in my, <coughs> excuse me, in my session was I routed these 16 to the effects in. As you can see, when I highlight that, it highlights this. Do you see what I'm talking about? So this is highlight highlighted. We can actually see where everything's going. So the first thing I wanted to do was bring it right back to the effects end. Okay, now you can see 15 and 16 are actually being dedicated to my preamp, which most of the time we're not going to do this. You're going to either be mixing and you can make a, a template for just mixing or you can make a template for just tracking. So it's really, really, really easy and really beneficial. So the next thing is this. So if we go into the effects... That's going to feed all the new antelope effects. And then the effects out, so once it hits the effects, that's going to go and feed my line out in my case, and I'm going to tell you why. In, in my studio, it's going to go line out because the line outs are feeding my summing. So everything you're hearing right now in the video is actually going through two eight channel SSL summing modules. Summing has become popular. So if you're looking for a studio and you, you think this might be the route, you need these mic preamps. You don't have all these outboard pre's. This is your budget. You can have the, the actual unit um, built in preamps. You can route them and then you can get like a summing box and route that out. You can actually reprint it back into the Orion studio and I can show you that in later videos. But this allows me to do what I'm about to show you. So focus on this. Number one, if you look at 15 and 16, you have me talking through this, right? I'm just joking. I just stopped talking. But you can actually change the EQ as you're listening. So this is like pretty much real time. Check, 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 check. So it's, it's a real time signal. Okay, so this is what I want to tell, really tell you. Number one, I can change these effects on the fly now, and there's no latency. That's a hard thing to come by these days. You, you start adding plugins in your doll, and you start adding more plugins and more plugins. And the softwares that we're using these days, the more you add, the smaller the computer, the more you're going to have these problems. You go into your buffer size, you go into all this. So let me talk about the HD delay system real quick. Number one, when I first got it, I was really upset. I was like, dude, it is not working. It's not doing what it's, it said it's doing. I actually have more latency. And then I realized one thing. Okay, let me really think this out before I start, you know, getting all fired up. Number one, the playback engine 
in your Pro Tools session, this has to be off. Okay, if you're trying to recompensate, in my case, and I'll have to verify with the antelope company, but in my case, this made it work absolutely phenomenal. Even with delay compensation on in Pro Tools, you still get delay issues every once in a while, depending on the plugin. But this made this more accurate than it's ever been. I don't hear any, any kind of delay in my voice right now. I feel like it's absolutely live. I feel as analog as I've been in a while in the studio. Um, this was one big selling point if you watch videos on the Orion studio after you watch this video, you're going to notice that this was a big selling point. Okay. Like, like, okay, we're going to make this non-existent and they did that. So when I hit okay here, you got to understand something. Okay. Even with a big system, an avid system, there are certain plugins that will make this thing act funny. I have plugins on. I have inserts on through, uh, these two 1073s. Um, I have, a Mog EQ going, I have the Rupert Neve bus processor going, I have all this stuff going. I'm actually being clocked from the 10M and the Pure 2, another antelope device, and they're all working in conjunction together with no latency. I, I literally had to stop and, and, and like knock on wood and go, please, please. because it, it's, part of, it's part of recording. So job well done. Let me, let me talk to you real quick. Oh, I've been talking to you the whole video, but so when I, when I started looking at this, I was like, wow, okay, so you can actually set this to different things, 192s, HDIO 8x8s, HDIO 16x16, so you can actually give it different, um, different settings depending on that different interface. I'd have to get into that a little more. I have not really experienced it or, or um, let's say, fold around with that part of this, but I did notice auto compensation it worked fine. Now, the other thing is, is manual compensation. You can see it's at 89 and now I'm a little bit off. So I can actually do this manually. If, if I really, really am picky as a musician and there's a lot of picky musicians, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm one of them. Like if, if it's off in my headphones and I'm trying to perform, it's not going to fly. It's not going to happen. So we'll go back to auto compensate. I get that mic a little hot. I just got excited about this video. So let me talk to you about some, some situations. So here's the mixer. You can actually build your own custom headphone mixes. This is something that I would use this for if I was tracking. You can actually assign each, um, whatever you want, your preamps. You can assign those to your mixing channels. You can assign all the HD outputs to the mixing channels. You can assign your effects to the mixing channels. Whatever you want to assign, that's what's so cool and why it shouldn't be very uh, intimidating and please take the time to learn it. The sound quality is second to none. They actually put in new AD and DA converters in this box. What I noticed right away was like it had a big image. It was really smooth sounding. It had an analog feel to it. It wasn't overdone. It sounds very, very uh, spaced in di the dimension in the room and you'll hear it here. So let's get into just a little before and after. Let me put, flip the camera real quick. I want you to see the device that I've been talking so highly about, and I want you to see the actual channel. To this real quick. So the top box that you're seeing is the Orion, and the box that we're going to be shooting out a little bit is the actual 1073s. So when I activate these, you're going to see that they're in the path, and what you're looking at here on channel one and two, um, not preamp, sorry, aux one and two is the 1073. So you're gonna get to hear this on an actual string part in a session I've been working on. Okay, so you're hearing it with the EQ. Watch how, how powerful this EQ is. Let me turn it off halfway through. That's insane. And that's why it's one of the most sought after EQs on the planet. So I probably didn't trick anybody because the camera's looking at the gear, but I just activated the real thing. Check this out. So back to the to the uh, antelope deal. 
Give me a second. I should loop this. Nothing in the path. Hardware. So the purpose of this video is to show you how insanely accurate that is. That was something that like when I started, I actually got excited. Like I was like a little kid again. I was like, oh my. And, and why is this so powerful? Let me show you. I only have two of these. Okay. These are, these are fairly, fairly pricey, these things. And, and I have two of them. And most studios out there, you know, it's, it's really great to have a nice mic pre, a nice few, you know, a few nice mic pre's. But in this case, I was starting to think about this. I was like, I do so many, um, like what I would call, you could call it like a submix, but it's a stem session where I'll take the stems from a session, check this out, and I will um, process them down. There's my mic, by the way. But I will process them down into like eight stems. And then, and then from that, I will actually route those through my summing. And what makes this so powerful is... If you look at this, so I want you to see this real quick. You'll see uh, 13, 14, 11, 12, 7, 8, 5, 6, 3, 4. So, so this is the summing, but prior to it hitting the summing, that's where the effects are coming in. That's how I could activate that. So let me show you that real quick. So if you look at the Orion and you look at the routing, like we talked about earlier, because HDX 16 out, that feeds the effects in except for my mic here. I just wanted to do that for the video. Effects out will feed the line out. The line out goes down to this box here, which is the SSL. The SSL goes to the master module and the master module, I don't know if you can see this on screen, but it's to the right is the Pure 2 from, from Antelope. So it feeds back to the Pure 2. The Pure 2 can then be captured um, as you're hearing it now. It's being captured through QuickTime, but it can also be captured through WaveLab. I do that a lot, so I'll open up Wave Lab and I'll actually print my final master through the through the actual um, AD of the Pure 2. Now, here's what's so crazy about that. In this case, the effects control panel, I can go through 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I can go through all these and actually assign my signal path. If I wanted all these to have those 1073s, I got to have that. And what's really neat about that is that's pre-summing in my case. So, so I can drive it harder into the summing. Now, another thing I want to show you on the interface, because this, this really means a lot to a lot of people, is the gain stage, trying to get the summing the right volume before it, you know, before you print it. So on this, you can see, and hopefully you can see that, but it says headphone one, says line out. So there's an act there's a dependent line out. You just heard me disappear. So check this out as I turn this down. And now I'm back. So, so you can actually change the gain structure prior to it hitting the summing with your line outs. So you can adjust your line outs. That, to me, that's, that's super beneficial. And then finally on this knob is your reamp volume your monitor volume, so you can have two different monitor sets. Let me talk about that real quick. You have the A and you have the B. So you can actually hook up two sets of monitors. You can actually have two separate monitor feeds, but you can't use them at the same time. And, and I don't know why you'd want to. I mean, you can't do quad or something with it, but that's a very useful thing for, for a studio trying to get an all-in-one solution. Another thing for the all-in-one solution guys out there is this little button here. It's a talkback mic. Now, talkback mic, you might think, well, so? 
Do you know how valuable that is if you want to start your own recording studio to have a booth in the other room and to be able to talk back and assign that feed to their headphones? We do it all the time on big mixing boards, but in the smaller studio, I remember first growing, you know, first getting into this, I was like, oh, this is great and all, and I'd have this like really nice interface, but it didn't have a talk back on it, and I'd have to buy an external box just to do the talk back. But here was the problem with the external box. It actually degraded my sound quality. So me trying to be a mixing guy and a mastery guy and do all this stuff, like I'm actually, just so if a guy came in to record his vocals or something, I need to um, reroute my whole studio through this little box that was a monitor controller and then talk back to them because some people really need that. They actually need you to do that. I mean, especially if you have a booth in your studio or if you're, if you're uh, you know, between the control room and the artist or if you want to use this in a bigger studio, that's, that's highly beneficial. So the other thing on there that I have not gotten into, I want to um, reach out to my one of my great friends, Freddie DeMarco. He's an amazing guitar player. He plays all over the world. And what I want him to do, which I haven't had a chance to do this, but for you guitar players out there, please, you know, stay with us. We're going to um, investigate the reamping. We're going to send a signal out. We're going to reamp with some really amazing amps. And, and we're going to bring it back into the system. So um, I think it's going to be a fun thing. And we'll also try to get Freddie to play some of these um, real-time effects, guitar amps and guitar cabinets. So for a guitar player... That's phenomenal. Another thing that you can do once you have the the routing going on is if if you look at um, let me see here. Give me one second. I think it would be okay. So depending on what you want to do, I don't know if this is going to work on this signal. No, it's not going to. Um, you can actually route the vocal in. And this reverb unit is pretty much um, the hardwired send on the mixer. So if you want to send a signal into this, for example, I think the USB, the antelope video, and, and hopefully this does not blow my speakers or hopefully it's not too loud. But let me, let me try to play this. Or hopefully it plays at all. So let me move this real quick. I got the wrong routing. Okay, so I didn't route that for the video. But that's actually USB Play 1 and 2. I could route that to... I mean, I could route it into something if you want me to. So it's a good time to show you some routing. But I don't want to get into that. So if I go USB Play 1, I can move that to line out 1 and 2, and that, that would feed my summing. Let me do it so people don't think I'm like some knucklehead. Um, let's go here. <clears throat> So this is about the, the missing, uh, I mean, you hear the phenomenal sound quality USB play out of this, but this is, this is what I was talking about with the actual functionality. Like I'm literally, you, you gotta understand something. I am playing this from the Orion Studio HD. USB mode. I am in my Pro Tools session at the same exact time. I don't, I don't know who you are out there watching, but that's actually very powerful because you can figure out different ways to route things. You can actually open up Reason and rewire it back in. So you can rewire it just in that um, Orion software. You don't have to do all this like mumble jumble to get it in there. You can actually say, oh, I want USB Play 1 through 16 to route directly into my HDX Record 1 through 16. Do you know how powerful that is? It's super powerful. Let's get into some mix. So here we go. And make sure, okay, 15 and 16. I just can't activate 15 and 16. We're good. Yeah, buddy. the kick. Let me stop this for a second. It is so imaged. 
That was the biggest thing that I noticed. It's like larger than life sounding. Um, it's definitely an upgrade on the converter, definitely. So watch this. I just totally destroyed the kick drum. And if you're if you have latency, you're not gonna hear that. Sounds good, man. That's gain matched. So let me solo that and we'll get out of here. I'm a kick drum maniac, dude. I love kick drums. You see how, like, quick that thing is? I can actually hear it working in my headphones. It's like... Like there's something going on inside the interface. So let's do it one more time, man. And then I'm going to add a few more and we'll get out of here. But thanks for watching. This is fun, man. I, I'm really happy about this device. I think it's probably one of the cooler devices I've had in the studio. So if you're looking to buy one, um, you know, hopefully we can get some links to things. If you want to ask me questions, I'm open. So let's see what we got. Let's add a little EQ. Show you some of these. Where's the VEQ? Let's go to this. Wow, that's cool. That sounds good. Probably don't need it on this. Let's go to the HLF. I just must like that because I keep picking the same one. Oh, you know what the ten? How about the ten seventy three? I'm at ten twenty three. Every kick drum needs some snap. That, that sounds phenomenal, dude. I don't care who you are. That sounds really good. Oh, I haven't even seen this one. This is one of my favorites out of the... I was about to say, out of the computer. It sounds like it. Wow. I really wish I was listening to my folk house here, but I'm listening to these headphones. That's unbelievable. I didn't even know that was in there. I'm glad that I'm doing this video. That's the other one. We actually have some of these in the tracking studio. That's why I'm saying that. It sounds very good. And forgive me for my mic popping a little bit. I didn't really set that. I sort of just said, okay, I'm going to put it on because I'm really excited to do this video. That's not a, it's not an equipment thing. Trust me. That's an engineering mistake. Check, check. This sounds good. Well, I don't want to give them all away. So, anyways, I just I just wanted to give you guys this information on the new Antelope interfaces. This is the Orion Studio HD. They have the Orion 32. 
um, that would work. Um, I think it's got, well, we can get into that in another video. Hopefully I can do that as well. Um, they have the uh, uh, Goliath. They have the Zen Studio. They have the Pure 2. Um, and they actually have the uh, the upgraded uh, atomic clock, which is, if, if you want the, the uh, jaw-dropping when you listen to your music, then, then look into the 10M with this as a combo. So my name is Doug Jenkins. Hopefully you learned something that maybe you wouldn't even have thought about learning. Um, learned a little bit about routing or something about, um, you know, processing prior to the DAW. And it can be after the DAW too. You can run these as inserts. But man, hopefully you got a pretty good education on this and you got a little bit of a grasp. So if you want to make the decision um, to go with this as your main interface, I think you picked picked a good one. So... Once again, my name is Doug Jenkins from iMixMaster.com. I mix the letter N, Master.com. If you want anything done from mastering to um, basic uh, mixing or reprocessing, all kinds of stuff. So we do it all. I don't do much tracking, but we're actually, our other studio, um, the other studio I partnered with, I shouldn't say mine, but we partnered together and we do a lot of tracking there. We have a seminar coming up. It's going to be fun. So thanks for watching my channel, man. I love everybody out there that subscribes to my channel. And you guys have a wonderful Halloween. We're around Halloween right now. So if you're watching this during Christmas or something, you have a wonderful wonderful Christmas. Um, I don't want to make this just like a seasonal video. And that's actually a warm audio WA87. If you want a, a great mic for a great price, that's a, that's another thing you got to look at. So we'll see you guys. I'm out. I got to go.